Hello all and welcome back to First Impressions uh, Sunset's Backstage Pass. I like this one. Uh, okay, so the premise is that Sunset... Uh, and Co. are going to a Star Wars mu music festival. Guess the local someone to Star Wars was a wizard of rock and roll. Uh, most of them are just going for general musical festival watching, though. So, uh, Pinky and uh, Sunset are there to see their favorite band. Uh, they're acting like a Christian model, Post Crush, who, upon first name drop, I thought was a boy band. Much, much happier for him to be able to, you know, huh. Mostly because it, uh, because of the whole, again, acting like a guy. Maybe a little bit of the Christian. And the fact they said ship Psy, Psy set. Hey. Anything I can use to even a little bit of evidence regarding that, you know. For Sunset's preferences, I'll take. Cause last one did have her winged that flash and Dre, so I mean it's not terrible, but I got my little preference there. And uh, yeah, uh, things proceed to go wrong because of Pinky's repeated mistakes. They get kicked out, miss the show. Since that wishes, oh, uh, Pinky wishes I could just do it over again. Then I do everything right. Pinky just says, and since it's like, if I could do it over again, I'd do it without you. And then she goes, brood, pink flash. She wakes up, it's the start of the morning again. Oh, and every start of every loop, she, yeah, because this is a time loop. She gets walloped by a, uh, or by, uh, Rainbow. Given it's a convention of a sort, I, my mind immediately flashes the stories of the infamous, horrible Yaoi board. If you don't know, short story time. Once upon a time, there were the things sold at anime conventions and a few as associated ones called the Yaoi board. It was a board for playfully whopping people in the butts. Yeah, not so great. Uh, but it upscaled a little to the point that it literally got someone hospitalized for a smashed hip. And eventually it died. Like it should have. But yeah. Sunset goes throughout the day similar, but managing to somewhat defuse Pinky. Uh, along with Twy, who. Saitai who does uh, alter things enough that some things take longer than they should. Gets the explanation for the little loop expl explained its why and proven before Pinky screws up and gets some kicks. Again. Sunset gets frustrated go and then wakes up and decides, yeah, no. She ditches Repeatedly, Pinky sees the show, sees the music, and goes, Yeah! She comes back. Pinky, who figured out she got ditched, did not take it well and straight up made a, a as, you, as established with main verse, Pinky. Built a mannequin of Sunset, she calls real Sunset. Yeah! That being said, even that, and Rarity's attempts to first shade, couldn't get her out of the first bliss of staying banned. Then the loop starts again, and she's frustrated because she thought, damn, that had to be the source of the loop. Andrew goes on a little more. We get a montage, skipping through various, just barely glimpsed moments of loops, until several, at least a few weeks have passed. Uh, to the total time of the loop is three weeks, so, yeah, 
since it's not having a time. But you get one of those good moments where a looper starts predicting shit. They haven't quite mastered everything, but they've still got a lot of things mastered, like stopping a guy from getting covered in uh, Snip's ice cream. You go, well, you could have warned me. I did, but you called me a witch. Are you? Uh, run before running into a guy who well, from one of the many distractions Pinky by did. And going, ah, oh, should know that. Oh, I didn't know you came up this early. And proceeds to go from a a mental filing system to and gets to the point. Guy, pink guy shows up just blah, blah blah right before his girlfriend dumps him. It's not you, it's her. No, I'm not a witch. And then leaves. <laughs> Said girl who's about to dump him. Kind of had to break down from having that exposed in a uh, manner she wasn't intending and runs off. Yeah. Eventually, she decides to run from her prongs based on a comment by another guy and tries to drive off of the uh, vehicle. They're all staying in at night, right before the loop ends. The transmission goes, which is... You, should, you know, they're an RV, and that is... Mmm. Mmm. Imagine, so it's gonna be a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially for an RV. Yeah. I'll leave that at that. At least it's fucking good enough to figure out the RV, the transmission was the source of the problems. All right. Since I'll, I'll give him a million dollars if I see it. To the mechanic about the mechanic being allowed me to fix it. Uh, eventually, Sai Twai gives her the idea of, you know, booking the other Twai. And then something gets very embarrassed. It's for that that they figure out that, no, it's not about a wish gone wrong or something. Someone's got a time a, a, ma a time travel doohickey from Equestria again. It really is uh, er Equestria's garbage dump for all their lost magical artifacts. So well, Twilight was helpful. Uh, until they go look at it. Anyway, they discover the dazzling are at the convention singing about repeating the same day over and over and over. Much difference besides. I thought they lost their places. Which, I'm honestly surprised to see them again. I, I mean, I, I, I've stumbled across a, fan art, a bit of fan art here and there of uh, Stazzlings plus Sunset, but I thought that was just, you know, people who like the Dazzlings decided, you know, they should be friends. Uh, and Sunset. I wasn't expecting the cameo again. And they weren't majorly important. Uh, oh, uh, oh, there's a security guard. I, I don't know. I feel like I know the security guard's voice, but I don't know how he is. But he takes very much pride in work. It takes a bit to get past him to actually investigate these dazzling sing to see if they've, they're the ones responsible. Uh... Pinky gets them all kicked, but she gives something I am giving him a uh, kid. Based on the one that he uh, tried to take home at a previous convention he was guarding, I got him fired. Because it was a cat convention and he was supposed to take one of the cats home. Uh, they went in. Sunset ruffled through uh, the girl's van. While Pinky ineffectually stood guard and then ran off mid guard, leading to the Dazzlings confronting Sunset, finding out no, really, that no, they're not. Time drawing. Uh, if they had it, they'd be using it, but they don't. The whole repeating the day over and over again—that's just how, because they're fu how fucking miserable their lives in the filthy, stinking human world is. Uh, 
What's the general asshole with this? They, they mentioned... Oh, we call dibs on, on the magic artifact. Uh... And... Yeah. Sunset goes on a rant and makes Pinky break down. Which leads Sunset to deciding that fuck it, the next loop's gonna be all about Pinky. She proceeds to use her time travel knowledge to help Pinky win the bike she wanted, go on all her little crazy side adventures, and even get those churros she keeps freaking going after those. Such limited edition churros that turns out to be as hard as a freaking crowbar. But, conveniently, the, their presence mixing things up just enough that the delivery boy, who delivers food to the, uh, to their favorite band, quit. So they pick it up, go del deliver, and pretty obvious straight from the get-go that they're the ones causing it. They found it, uh, and have been using it to repeat the day over and over and over and over and try to have their big return break. Because their careers need it. It's their uh, coming out out of retirement. One, one day reunion tour. No real mention of how Sunset uh, is keeping her memories. But theoretically, since her entire shtick is memories. Uh, while she can't ignore something that deliberately fucking with memories. Like the, the memory stone. She is able to survive the time loops via her own memory abilities. Uh, unfortunately they aren't able to take it away and the, uh, group gets them kicked out. And it, they, they make it very clear that at the start of each loop they're gonna hand over a drawing, one of them with an art school reject, to the people that it's just good enough for them to identify. I mean, it's actually shit, it's not remotely good, good except for the fact that, again, in this setting, there are other features that are really unique and identifiable to each person their hair. Uh, yeah. They kicked it out, and Sunset lands a fucking laser-guided burn on the security guard, based on a comment she made in one of the more, the, flat, the loop where she got them to let him in past Dazzlings, which, combined with other things, is enough to let him, let, let him back in. Oh, they hadn't actually done anything. Which, of course, they immediately go and get to do a hooky. Sa sa saving the day with one of those uh, steel hard churros bent into a boomerang. Uh, and then they fight over it, pop up on stage, smash it, and then give the pop group the inspirational speech they need to get their shit together and realize, oh, wait, blah, 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 blah. Story ends. Time loop ends. Uh, the end. It was... I like time loop stories. I'm big. I'm a decent fan of them. I, I like them whenever they pop up and whatever fandom I, I'm involved with. And, uh, yeah, uh, obviously, if, it, if you don't somehow now, the MLP fandom beat beat them to the punch a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I like the story. It had a lot of fun moments. Uh, a lot of dumb moments here and there, but a lot of fun moments. I, you know, general time time loop stuff is fine. Like, I always find a weary time looper dealing with the shit of being in a time loop to be enjoyable. But that's just kind of what you have. That makes sense. I am absolutely going to shill some time loop stories now. First of all, anytime you give me an excuse, I'm going to shill Mother of Learning. Uh, I cannot remember the name of the writer at the moment. Because they have a screen name, and it's... Nobody something. Nobody a couple numbers. But they also have a pin name now, because it's been refined. It is being published on Amazon. 
Kindle. Uh, Mother of Learning. Again. Best fucking time loop story. Original fiction. Loosely inspired by Naruto. Mm, just the best ever. It has some of the hallmarks. Uh, a a uh, time loop was, that starts off with a, the same thing in the fire. Like, uh, Sunset repeatedly getting walked with the pat with the oar paddle. Uh, he gets waken up by morning, morning, morning of his little sister, and it, who crashes it in on top of him. Yeah. It's a original fiction fantasy story. One of the best parts is whenever, whenever a, the story starts to get stale with the, the tension lowering because the, the you know time loops over. It'll introduce a new reason for the main characters to get their shit into gear, at least for a while. That keeps things interesting and keeps things fresh. And it even has an arc, post-time loop, where they deal with shit. It's great. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's something you don't see loops often, but an actual fret is really helpful. Now, MLP stuff. Like I said, this is where I go. MLP stuff. Because this reminds me of a lot of MLP stuff I've read over the years. The first hard reset. The best freaking time loop story I've read, ever read for fan fiction. Uh, it's got two sequels and a spinoff. Don't read the spinoff. It's uh, very, very mature rated and gross and I... I don't even think I made it two chapters before I ducked out. Like, y you don't need to read the spin-off because every it's just the coverage of a dark, fucked up timeline. You don't... Worry. That continues a bad end what if at the end of, st in, end of the first story. But it's a very fun story. It's got, a, the, again, not the one thing you need. The hallmark start where the main character always gets a, a annoying opening. Well, that didn't work. Basically, Starlight... I'm uh, not Starlight. <laughs> Starlight didn't even exist in a glimmer of eyes. Twilight! Uh, starts a loop right before a... It was experimenting a spell. Right before a changeling invasion happens. It's majorly successful and ends up triggering the elements of harmony to explode violently. Uh, destroying everything within reach of Twilight. Yeah. Things uh, are bleak. It heavily goes into Twilight just dealing with shit. But one of the best parts is the sequel. Which goes into a lot of Twilight's PTSD. From dealing with the time loop. And that's why I, I recommend that. Because even as much as I love Mother of it didn't even go into that much. Like, you spend centuries where death itself, where death is meaningless, and anything you do is meaningless, and death is meaningless. And suddenly, here you are, running around, uh, and you die. Someone says it's the wrong thing, it sets you off. Uh, maybe worse by the guilt of certain actions taken by Looper Twilight. Like, right when she was about to successfully uh, do a big thing that she thinks will save the day. I'm not saying where it did. She uh, goes, wait, if this breaks the loop, oh, I can't do that thing anymore. And it proceeds to reach up and snap her own neck. Yeah. And it also introduces consequences for things. It's a trilogy. Uh, it's a decent time travel story afterwards, but that's the best part. Second of all, Prince Blue Blood, where this is a, there are not a lot of things. So, oh, get Pinky the Perfect Day. I, I know that's a big thing that you know uh, the the guy from Groundhog Day did, but 
Blue Bloods Groundhog Day parody was basically the same thing, but was best night ever. Bray gives the girls the best night ever. After <laughs> quite exceeding uh, Groundhog Day's level of madness. So, not Twilight's level of I have completely snapped and I will do it, whatever it takes to leave. That's where the dark timeline happens. It does not happen with the main character. It's a post-epilogue ending. Alternate ending. Uh. Finally, the infinite loops. Mass grand crossover of time loops, starting with a guy called Norrell. Don't bother reading his shit. It was crap. Then going to Sephiroth, starting with How to Train Your Dragon. Don't bother reading them. They're not very good. Uh. And then getting to the MMP loop. So that's when he actually started really becoming better as a writer. Uh, and, like, that's why I said that the earlier stuff is not. Friggin' because she knows. Uh, good. Like, uh, yeah, it's just for less well written. And there's a lot of other things, but that. And it, it was a mass grand work. I dropped that on the wrong line, but it was still interesting. So if you're interested, maybe check that. Uh, one of uh, it had it had some really good time loop uh, moments, like a elder Twilight Looper giving a young Looper, because that it, it really did play with things differently than most time loops. Uh, advice on handling the whole, yeah. It literally talks about how most loopers generally have a breaking point in, 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 before they recover, and just, when everyone stays, to keep staying the same no matter what you do, uh, it's hard not to see them as, as nothing more than broken toys. Other things involve having Trixie be a big thing in the fireworks. More so than uh, magic axe. Fireworks. Which, hey, years later, Trixie. Pinky's buying some back alley big chungus fireworks with Trixie's mark on it. Having a redemption for Chrysalis that was actually pretty neat and well done. Uh, it literally required uh, specific things only possible. Okay, so basically, the way it works is every universe has a core looper, an anchor, that one, two, all these things. And then you have other people who, based on closeness to the core looper, occasionally loop. The further away, the longer it takes for them to start appearing in loops, and the less often. Chrysalis looped into a broken loop, which is a time loop where things are off. Sometimes it's just a simple little hair change or location change. Sometimes it's an excuse to st stick the characters into fanfics for jokes. This one was, this one had her an a a eight. Wow, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I have made this a lot longer. Point is, uh, it was and it's interesting if you're in, really into time loops and MLP, check it out. Uh, feel free to drop it. I did, but it was it was an interesting thing, and I'm gonna recommend it. Uh, again, I don't know who wrote blue, the Blue Blood one, but just look up Blue Blood Prince Blue Blood Time Loop, and you, you should be able to find it. Anyways, Cypher signing out, and we've got one more. Probably not today, but should be able to get over soon and this entire thing will be over with yeah that'll be the end of it for a long while but until then I repeat uh, this is I pretty sign out and I will see you all next time folks